flow sensors. Water flows through them, spins a small fan, and they send a signal to your aquarium controller to tell you how fast that water is moving. Okay, great, but why would you want a flow sensor? How can flow sensors help you reach your reefing goals? And is the juice worth the monetary squeeze? Let's answer those questions. There are a few places where using flow sensors to monitor flow rates is extremely helpful. And there are also places you just plainly should not use flow sensors, which I'm also gonna go over. There are two extremely useful places to monitor flow. The first and most obvious being on a UV sterilizer. UV sterilizers have very specific flow rates that you'll need to provide in order for them to work effectively. Rather than trying to guesstimate the flow based on the pump that you're using to feed the sterilizer and what adjustments have been made to an intake valve or the controller if it's a DC pump, you can use a flow sensor to tell you exactly what flow rate the UV sterilizer is receiving and adjust it accordingly until it's dialed in perfectly so you know that your UV sterilizer is doing its job. Another useful spot for a flow sensor is on your aquarium's return pump. Monitoring the flow of your return pump has a few advantages. You can keep track of the ideal flow rate for your overflow system to keep things nice and quiet while still having adequate turnover through the filtration. You can see when the flow begins to drop, which can indicate the pump has a clog or needs to be cleaned. Heck, you could even set an alarm to notify you if the flow rate increases, which could happen if you accidentally bump a valve or the controller of a DC pump and change the setting. In either case, monitoring the flow of your return pump can save your pets and your floors. Beyond UV and return pumps, those of us with closed loops, external filtration equipment like recirculating skimmers, refugiums or reactors, or mixing stations can also use flow sensors to keep track of how our equipment is performing, dial in the optimal flow rates, and keep track of when pumps need to be cleaned. Like I was mentioning earlier though, there are some places that you should not be putting a flow sensor. Don't do it. While there might be some good arguments for monitoring the flow of a drain, flow sensors should not be used on drain lines for obvious reasons. The passive flow of a drain is easily hindered and even the fan of a flow sensor can affect the flow inside of that drain. Because water passing through the drain is also unfiltered, there is a higher risk of it clogging up, which would be a big problem. Flow sensors also have minimum and maximum flow rates that they can handle. If the flow rate is too low, the sensor won't be able to register it. If it's too high, it could damage the sensor. So it's important to also size the sensor to the equipment you're intending to use it with. For example, the FMK or flow monitoring kit from Neptune Systems gives you a one inch sensor rated for 150 to 1500 gallons per hour and a pair of half inch flow sensors rated for 30 to 250 gallons per hour along with PVC couplings so you can easily install them with standard PVC pipe and fittings which is going to cover the vast majority of reefers needs. But there are also two inch and quarter inch flow sensors as well so if you have a much larger system or tiny tubing, you're covered. Setting up the FMK FMK is really simple. Once you connect the FMM module to your Apex using the Aquabus cable and plug in the flow sensors to the ports on the FMM module, you'll see tiles for each flow sensor right on the dashboard in the Fusion app where you can view the current flow rate. Then you can click on the tasks clipboard icon, search for flow sensor, and it'll walk you through the simple setup for each sensor, including high and low alarms that can send a notification to your smart device if the flow is ever outside of your set range. But if you're like me and you'd also like to have an audible and visual alarm right at the aquarium as well, you can pick up one of the adaptive reef alarms that plugs directly into one of the 24 volt accessory ports on your EBA32 energy bar. Then in the Fusion app, you can click on the triple cogwheel icon to reveal the hidden icons, then click on the flow chart icon, click on EB832, then click on the cogwheel on link A or link B, depending on which of the 24 volt ports you've plugged the alarm into. Scroll down to the bottom where the configuration field is and enter this code. I'll leave a link to the code in the description below as well, so you can just copy and paste it. Once you're finished, scroll back up to the top and click the upload icon. And from then on, anytime a sensor is tripped, your adaptive reef alarm will beep and flash to immediately draw your attention, even if your phone isn't in your pocket. And that isn't the only simple trick to really make the most out of your Neptune Systems Apex. In fact, we walk you through all of the best ways to use all kinds of sensors and other Apex peripherals to make reefing not just easier, but safer in this Master Your Apex playlist right here.